Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Electrified Outdoors Garage. Today, I've got a pretty cool video for you. We're gonna update the software on our 2024 Silverado EV RST. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys how I use the factory diagnostic tool to flash the different modules in the Silverado EV. Now this will work very similarly for any GM vehicle. I'll put links to the products that I use down in the video description as well. So if you choose to do this, you can do this on your own. I will preface this video with a couple of warnings. One, be very careful if you lose power, the battery in the vehicle dies during this flash process, it can brick a module and cause you to have to have the vehicle towed. And while it should be covered under GM warranty, because you're using the official GM tool, I cannot make any guarantees. You will need to make sure you have a jump pack, not a battery tender or anything like that. It has to be another battery or a jump pack that you're hooking up to the main battery in the rare event that the main battery becomes depleted. You don't want that voltage dropping and causing any issues. So with all that said, if you do not feel 100% comfortable doing this on your own, I highly recommend you visit your trusted dealer instead and let them perform these updates. Without further ado, let's get started. So I apologize in advance for the lighting folks. I am here in my garage and it's a little junked up right now, isn't everybody's? <laughs> but I wanna start by telling you, you need to turn off anything that could be draining power from the battery. This includes the headlights and the HVAC especially, because while you're doing this process, it can be very time consuming and you don't want anything that's going to help the battery get drawn down faster. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously pop the hood you can see that i have the hood pop here but we're going to now go inside the vehicle and we're going to turn off the headlights and turn off the climate control and of course make sure our audio system is off as well so i'm going to turn the climate control off make sure the vehicle is on also when you're doing this because if the vehicle's off and then you turn the vehicle on all these things may turn on and you don't want that. So you can see we turned off the climate control. We went into the lighting, make sure that's off. And then we also wanna make sure that our audio is not on, which it's not. So now we're ready to go to the next step and we're gonna connect the jump pack to the main vehicle battery, just to give it a little boost while we're doing our programming process. Now the next thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to remove this trim right here to expose our 12 volt battery so that we can connect our jump pack. So this can take several hours to complete. So it's important to have a battery that has adequate backup. And a lot of those little lithium jump packs only provide power for a short period of time. A proper jump pack or spare battery will provide full power to the main 12 volt. So we're just gonna lip pry up on this. The, these have clips and don't wanna break anything, but just gently pry up and pry up on this a little bit. Don't wanna break anything. And once we pry up on this, you can see that we have our positive terminal here, which we're gonna expose that. And then we're also gonna take this piece off as well. Okay, and when we take this piece off, you can see that this is gonna be where we're gonna stick our ground, right here. So we're gonna put our jump pack in here, ground, positive, and this is going to provide some backup power while we're doing our programming. So the next step I'm gonna do is actually connect my jump pack. Oh, and make sure your jump pack is fully charged before you start this process because a dead jump pack is not gonna help you out if your voltage drops. Okay, so this is our jump pack. This is a Clore Automotive jump pack. And I'm just gonna undo these terminals here, connect them up. And I'm actually gonna leave it sit right here in the front. And I'll switch the camera angle in a moment so that you can see what we're doing here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is connect our positive terminal. 
to the battery right here. Make sure it's connected securely. And the second thing I'm gonna do is connect our negative post. Watch out for the refrigerant line fill port right here. You don't wanna damage that. Make sure your connection is secure. All right, so we'll show you a slightly different angle here. Here you can see our jump pack and this button is gonna show us our voltage. And now if you tap that, you can see that it's actually connected and it's being charged by the vehicle's system. So this is good. But during the programming events, the DC to DC converter is not gonna be charging the 12 volt battery. So that's why we need to have this hooked up. If you go over here, you can see how I have the negative terminal hooked up positive terminal, just a closer look at that. Everything is secure. And I'm actually just gonna take this jump pack and I'm gonna move this back out of the way a little bit so that I have some space to put my laptop. Okay, and here you can see our setup. You can see on the right we have the GM MDI2 official diagnostic interface. That's just gonna to connect to the OBD2 port in the vehicle. You wanna make sure it's connected to the laptop with a wired connection, so USB. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you the vehicle-wide programming today in this video. I am gonna to try to get a hardwired connection in here and show you that at some point in the future. But I will show you how to check the modules and flash them. Okay, everyone, so here we are. This is the AC Delco TDS, or Technical Delivery System website and you can see that I'm logged in here. It is on the subscriptions page. This is where you're gonna to need to start. You do need to have a subscription to be able to use the SPS2 service programming system. It is $45 per vehicle or per VIN, and that gives you 24 months, or you can flash each module in the vehicle one time. After that, you will need to purchase another subscription. Probably worth it for a lot of folks if you're far from a dealer or the amount of time it's gonna take you to transport it to the dealer and, and all that is, is great. $45 is a relatively inexpensive cost for this. So you can see I've already purchased it. If I hadn't, I'd be able to do it here. The, if this is the first time you're flashing the vehicle, you will need to update the MDI2 diagnostic tool first. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but when you install the software, it will prompt you to update it. Just make sure you update that first. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna view. I'm gonna click on my VIN, and this is gonna take us into the TechLine Connect. And then we're gonna click this button here to launch the TechLine Connect. And each time you launch the TechLine Connect, it will check for updates. We just updated this, so there's no updates available, but if there are, you need to update those before you proceed. Once we get into the TechLine Connect software, it's gonna load the SPS2. We're gonna to need to connect to the vehicle. So you're gonna to wanna, to, again, make sure that the vehicle is on in the run ready position. So if you have an on-off button here in the Silverado EV, we don't have that. So you just press the brake, make sure the vehicle is on. So three things you're gonna to wanna to make sure are off to prevent them from draining down the battery. That's the headlights, the audio system, and the climate controls. Make sure all three of those things are off. So quick note, you can see we have ESET here and we have paused the protection. That's gonna prevent our virus software from potentially blocking something. It's also gonna give us the maximum performance on our machine. So now that everything's loaded, we're gonna go into our vehicle here and we're gonna select the vehicle. And you can see that our VIN shows up here. And so we're gonna select this vehicle. And we're gonna go into the SPS2 over here on the left-hand side. Make sure you have some coffee, but also make sure that it's not potentially gonna get spilled on your PC. And now once we're in, you can see we have our VIN in here. And 
We're going to select a mode, reprogram or replace and reprogram. We want to reprogram. And the diagnostic tool is ready. And we can see we have the official GM diagnostic tool. Make sure your VIN matches the VIN shown here. And we're going to click this little green next down here in the lower right hand corner. Make sure you allow adequate time to complete this process, especially if you're going to be flashing multiple different modules in the vehicle. Take a little bit of time to proceed through. And once it reads everything, we can see all the controllers that we have available here in the vehicle to program. And another thing I want to show you folks is for the radios. So like folks that are looking to do the Sidewinder update, when you click on A11 radio and you go down here, you're going to need to go through several functions here. You're going to need to prepare for a USB file transfer. You're going to need to do the USB file transfer. And then what that does is creates a thumb drive that you go and stick in the vehicle. And that will update the radio from a thumb drive. And that's what gives you the Sidewinder update. A lot of folks have taken their vehicles in and had the vehicle wide programming done, but did not have Sidewinder. That's why you don't have Sidewinder on your Silverado EV. So the radio is a little bit more involved because you actually need to do the USB file downloads and update the software that way. The telematic control module is also something that gets updated a little bit differently. So you can see prepare for software update and software update here for the telematics control module. Telematics control module is basically what gives you your connectivity to OnStar and GPS and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, even though it's not requiring an update, I'm going to go ahead and reprogram the drive motor control module as advised in the service bulletin for the Super Cruise update. So we're going to override this. telling me the battery must be fully charged. And it's going to download the calibrations from the server. And then it's going to program the vehicle. This process can take quite a bit of time. You'll hear different clicking sounds and things like that on the vehicle. This is all normal. Now it's going to actually program it. You can see that it reprogrammed uh, the module one and now it's going to proceed in program module two. And while we're waiting for this, I'm just going to say, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each one. Since I've already connected everything and I'm already here, I'm going to update anything that needs updating. Now, after the programming event is completed, you're going to get this warranty claim code up on the screen. Now, what I do is I open up the snipping tool and I capture this warranty claim code that shows the programming event. And I'm just going to save it to my pictures folder. I'm actually going to create a new folder. I'm going to try to create a new folder here. And I'm going to call it 0503 or actually 0504, 2025. Just so I know that everything captured in here is from this date. And I'm gonna say proceed, same then. This is gonna take me back to the main screen and I'm just gonna go through and update or check every one of the modules and update only the modules that need updating. 
We know that the image processing module needs updating and that takes a long time to, to run through. But I'm just gonna go through and update everything. Remember, after you've completed all this, you're gonna need to clear any codes from the system. Okay, folks, so that really is all there is to it. Um, you just go into each one of these modules and look at the configuration, see if it needs updating. Uh, or if you're coming in to address a specific issue, you can pull up the TSB uh, either off the NHTSA website or off the GM website if you have access. But in any event, anytime you program it, you should have the option to clear all DTCs. And if you click that, it will clear all DTCs for you. Now, I don't have the full uh, suite of software tools here. I just have SPS2 access. So I also have a little uh, OBD2 tool and uh, I'll put that down in the video description as well. Fairly inexpensive. And I can go in with that if there are any DTCs and I can do a clear that way to clear out any errors that are in the system. But as you can see, this is not for the everyday user, but if you're a tech geek like me and you wanna make sure all the modules in your vehicle are up to date, or if you just want to get the updates on there as quickly as possible, you can use this. It is not a cheap solution. Uh, it's probably about $900 to $1,000 when you purchase the diagnostic tool and purchase the subscription and everything like that. So again, it's not a cheap solution. This is kind of a hobbyist kind of geek solution. Also make sure that you are capturing all the warranty claim codes. If there is an issue down the road, you'll need that to get warranty service on your vehicle. That proves that you use the official tool and that the programming process did complete successfully. Okay, folks, well, that's pretty much it for us today. I've shown you how to use the SPS2 programming software to update the modules in your GM electric vehicle. Again, I don't recommend you do this unless you're 100% comfortable in what you're doing. If there's any shred of doubt in your mind, Take the vehicle to the dealer and let them do it. They have all the equipment. And also, if something goes wrong, they're gonna be responsible and be able to fix it there for you. What do you think about this process? Let us know down in the comments section. As always, remember to hit that thumbs up and like so that others can find our content just a little bit easier on YouTube. Click on subscribe and then hit that bell so you get notified anytime we add new content. As always, hug the people you love every chance you get, and thank you guys so much for watching.